this beautiful PC plays Starfield at 80 frames per second, Lies of P at over 100 frames per second, and Cyberpunk 2077 at 70 plus frames per second, wait for it, with ray tracing cranked to ultra. How much would you say this magical mystery PC cost? $5,000? $2,000? How about $1,000? And we did it all thanks to ASRock's Radeon RX 7600 Phantom Gaming Overclock GPU. We've built some wild PCs here at Robitech. From the spare no expense RGB laden rigs to the build from a box PC kits. But in the past few years, we haven't been able to do nearly as many budget builds. No thanks to outlandish prices, especially GPU prices. But with GPUs like AMD's Radeon RX 7600 from our friends at ASRock, also things like the Intel, ARC, and even the lower budget cost ones from NVIDIA, the drought is starting to become over. Now I imagine when you think about budget builds, your mind probably wanders off into some dark corner of the imagination where abominable Franken PCs rise from workbenches, seeking the meaning of their existence, only to have rioting villagers with pitchforks and torches showing up at their door. Now, if you've been putting off building yourself a gaming PC, you need to watch what you're spending it on. We really hope you follow along with our build on this one. We were blown away by how well it performed, but rather than just tell you, we wanna show you how stunning this thing turned out and some of the crazy things we were able to do with this $1,000 system. But before we talk about what makes this budget build beautiful, I do wanna talk about the RX 7600 we have from ASRock. The Phantom Gaming RX 7600 has eight gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM to feed its 2048 stream processors. It has a three fan design with an addressable RGB logo on the side of the GPU, as well as lighting for the center fan. It's retailing for $269.99 at the time of this video. And the Radeon RX 7600 Phantom Gaming OC is one of ASRock's on-ramp into the world of RDNA 3. And this is no basic GPU. It's, it's not budget looking. It's got copper contact for the GPU die with ASRock's ultra-fit heat pipes for thermal management. And it also has a Phantom Gaming branded metal backplate. And then, <laughs> There is the RGB. The Phantom Gaming RX 7600 has an addressable RGB logo on the side of the card, as well as a clear center fan to let the light shine through. All of this is controlled by ASRock's Polychrome Sync software. Going back to the price for a second, the RX 7600 really doesn't have a current gen price competitor from the team over at Nvidia, but it does land squarely in the eight gigabyte Intel Arc A770's backyard, which on a side note, ASRock has one of those, and it's an amazing option for budget builds also. And you can check out our $1,500 system build we built with the 16 gigabyte version of ASRock's Phantom Gaming A770 right here after you finish this video. I'm just gonna say this up front. The more we've tested it, the more we saw that this GPU is no slouch. And that doesn't even touch some of the side benefits to an AMD build like this one right here. What do you get for $1,000? Well, let's check out the parts list, which will be linked down in the description below. The case that we're building in is, well, it's sleek, it's small, and it's beautiful. It's called the Fractal Design Pop Air Mini, which is a really simple but pretty case, and it already has three RGB fans in it, so that automatically makes it faster. For CPU, we have the AMD Ryzen 5 7600, 7600 non-X. Now, this is being cooled by the Deepcool AK400 Digital, which has that very cool display with that just that little hint of purple there at the top. Now for motherboard, we're using the B650M Phantom Gaming Riptide Wi-Fi, pairing perfectly with the Phantom Gaming OC Radeon RX 7600, both courtesy of ASRock. For memory, we're using 32 gigs of G-Skills Triton Z Neo RGB DDR5 RAM running at 6,000 mega transfers. For storage, we're using Crucial's P5 one terabyte NVMe drive, and we're powering it with Corsair's RM750E 750 watt power supply. And we're using cable extensions from Acer Horse, which in this case are black. Now the price out of the door, if you were gonna build this is over $1,000 but you can shave it to under $1,000 for a couple of reasons. Number one, the Ryzen 5 7600 comes with a stock cooler that gets the job done, and you, if you do no cable extensions, you're actually going to be less than $1,000, and especially if you swap out your DDR5 for non-RGB versions like the G-Skill Flare 
X5. But honestly, if you can swing the extra, it's worth it just so you can be prouder of what you built. And don't worry, for the video that we did, that's a step-by-step -step guide for this build, we actually show you how to do the stock cooler and do all of those installations without having to break the bank. So you look at both versions, which is actually pretty cool. Let's talk about performance because this is where things get really exciting. As we look at the numbers, we are going to showcase this build where it's meant to thrive at 1080p. Not only that, in each game, we went right to the highest presets available and enabled upscaling either with FSR or Intel's XCSS where available and whichever worked better. The one exception is Fortnite and obviously Call of Duty since competitive players typically prefer frame rates over fancy graphics. So these ones are set to low, uh, either with Epic's TCR or the appropriate setting in Call of Duty. Now here's how this PC did in each one of these games. For Forza Horizon 5, with FSR set to quality, we got an average of 82 frames per second. In Modern Warfare, with FSR set to quality, we saw 175 frames per second. And later on, if you watch the video of the other one, we actually saw north of 100 without any FSR either. In Tiny Tina's Wonderland with FSR 2, this build skipped through the carnage of its benchmark at 129 frames per second, as the numbers translate in my mind with as much glee and explosions as Tiny Tina brings to just about any fight. Now let's move on to Starfield. Our Interstellar Adventures had FSR on its default setting and we recorded frame rates on average of 80 frames per second. Now getting competitive in Fortnite with Epic's TCR set to quality, we got a respectable 354.7 frames per second before we needed to hit that chug jug. And finally, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider with Intel's XE super sampling turned on, we got 144 frames per second. But wait, there's more. And this is where things get spicy. You're probably wondering why I haven't mentioned Cyberpunk 2077, especially since I've hyped it up in the intro. This is, after all, the crisis of our times. At 1080p, with presets on ray tracing ultra and FSR set to auto, we got 41 frames per second. Holy, wait a minute, Roby. Did you just lie to me? Did you just do this to clickbait? You said you got 70 frames per second and now I have PC building trust issues. Okay, I wasn't lying because that isn't the whole story. You gotta stay tuned for next week's part two, just kidding. While testing this build on stream, we swapped a few things around in the settings and we blew some minds. At Ultra, with no ray tracing or FSR enabled, we saw around 80 frames per second of raw rasterized performance. It was so good, we literally had a dude fall out of the sky out of nowhere to see it up close. It, it did happen, watch the stream, you just died right in front of me. With ray tracing set on low and FSR enabled, we saw around 60 to 70 frames per second, but we weren't quite done playing around with settings. After testing with FSR enabled, we turned to Intel's XESS and cranked up the settings to ray tracing ultra. And we saw an average of 70 to 80 FPS while running through a live in-game mission. In other words, XESS enabled us to play Cyberpunk 2077 at ray tracing ultra in the above 60 frames per second butter zone with all of those glorious rays being traced around Night City. Guys, if you don't believe me, go watch it all live on the video and live stream right here. Basically, what I'm getting at is that this build with a budget Ryzen CPU and a Radeon RX 7600 Phantom Gaming OC from ASRock was a shockingly good 1080p system. With settings wide open, we left nothing on the table and it achieved some incredible results. Now, we did rely on super sampling to get our performance numbers, but honestly, how great is it when we have two options to choose from? With how good hardware agnostic upscalers like FSR and XESS have become, we can push the boundaries of what systems like this can do. And this one handled it like a champ. And we haven't even talked about the killer features baked into AMD's Adrenaline software that come with a card like this. Things like AMD Link, which we just did an amazing video on. They give you remote access to your games to play on mobile devices like phones or tablets or your beautiful ROG Ally. HyperRx, which is essentially a one button configurator that combines features like Radeon Anti-Lag for reducing input latency while also using upscaling and beyond or AMD's forthcoming Fidelity FX Super Resolution or FSR 3 with fluid motion frames, which hopefully by the time this video comes out is out of technical testing. Not only that, if AMD follows its track record with performance tuning and driver updates, this thing is just going to get better over time. Again, 
If you've been waiting for a good time to build a budget PC, this is it. ASRock's Phantom Gaming B650M motherboard and RX 7600 GPU gave us a great platform to build on without breaking the bank or sacrificing quality. It performs well and it looks great. The only, dis the only disappointing thing about this system is that I don't have a good place to hide it while I come up with a reasonable explanation for bringing another PC home with me this week. I don't think my family will believe the it just followed me home excuse again, though I don't know. It's pretty stunning. Now, huge shout out to ASRock for sending us the GPU, the MOBO. Now we wanna know what you think about this build down in the comments below. Would you build it? I hope so. Are you excited to see budget builds using this GPU? And did this video change your mind or get you thinking differently about the RX 7600? And did you even consider that you could use Intel's XESS or FSR with different GPUs? I know, it blows your mind and you should always use the one, try each one of them to see which ones work best. And let us know down in the comments below how your experience has been. Now, while you're down there, go ahead and slap that subscribe button, whip that like button and ring that notification bell so that you get a notification each and every time we post a video like this right here on Robitech. Thank you so much for watching this video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.